Carbon is unique among the elements in the number and variety of the compounds which it can form. Over a quarter of a million have already been isolated and described. But this gives a very imperfect idea of its powers, since it is the basis of all forms of living matter. Science today is still unable to fully understand the capacity of the carbon atom. In laboratories, new compounds are produced every day. Currently, it is possible to talk about almost two million compounds. As it is known, the carbon atom is capable of forming approximately 1.7 million compounds. While the other elements can form a total of 300,000 compounds, carbon, in an extraordinary manner, is able to form 1.7 million just on its own. In conclusion, the carbon atoms form 85% of all known compounds. The question of how the carbon atom first came into existence leads us to another miracle. The carbon atom forms through a series of nuclear reactions in the center of giant stars. However, these reactions have such delicate physical balances that despite being a materialist himself, even the renowned British astronomer Fred Hoyle, who discovered this, was unable to refrain from saying that a super-intellect had intervened in physics. God has created the universe with a flawless harmony. In referring to a super-intellect, Hoyle admits the manifest existence of God. It very definitely cannot be thought that one day pieces of stone and inanimate earth gave rise to a living being. Some people, however, make just such a claim. In other words, they maintain that atoms came together by themselves and gave rise to living things by allegedly evolving. It is clear that this claim flies in the face of reason because atoms have no consciousness and thus no ability to organize themselves. For example, everyone knows that an airplane cannot emerge from the mixing together of aluminum, plastic and petrol. A plane only emerges when you bring these substances together in a conscious manner, with very fine calculation. Therefore, the existence of such raw materials as aluminum, steel and plastic is not enough for there to be a plane. A plane only emerges through conscious planning. Living systems are no different. A living cell came into being through inanimate atoms being brought together with a very special creation. Living cells' properties of growth, reproduction and the like are the result of a perfect creation, not of the attributes of their molecule. This is God's creation of living things from inanimate atoms. God is he who splits the seed and kernel. He brings forth the living from the dead and produces the dead out of the living. That is God, so how are you perverted? There is a great power stored within the nucleus of the atom. So great is that power that with the discovery of this energy, humanity is able to make giant canals connecting oceans together, build mountain passes, and produce artificial climates. This force, used in nuclear energy and medicine, is without doubt of vital importance in the present day. The name of this magnificent power hidden within the nucleus of the atom is strong nuclear force. This force is released by the technical process known as fission, in other words, nuclear splitting, and an enormous amount of energy is released during this reaction. The reaction known as fission is the splitting of the atomic nucleus, held together with the strong nuclear force, the most powerful force in the universe.
The principal substance used in fission reaction experiments is uranium. During fission experiments, scientists shot a neutron at the uranium nucleus at great velocity and discovered that the nucleus began to split into its components, releasing a certain amount of energy. Under the effect of the energy produced, the uranium nucleus begins ejecting the components it contains at great velocity and thus initiates a chain reaction. Each newly split nucleus behaves like the initial uranium nucleus. Thus, a chain of nuclear reactions starts. A large number of uranium nuclei are split into fragments as a result of these chain reactions, causing an enormous amount of energy to be released. It was these nuclei divisions that have caused the Hiroshima and Nagasaki disasters, causing the death of tens of thousands of people. At the moment of the detonation of the atomic bomb dropped on Hiroshima by the United States in 1945, and in its aftermath, approximately 100,000 people died. Another atom bomb dropped on Nagasaki by America caused the death of another 40,000 people right at the moment of detonation. While the power released by the nuclei caused the death of many people, it also destroyed a very large residential area and gave rise to many irreparable genetic and physiological disorders in the remaining residents of that area due to the radiation released, which was to affect generations to come. How is it, though, that while our Earth, the whole atmosphere, and everything animate and inanimate, including us, are composed of atoms, this incredible force stored in the atom is not released by natural means? Because the flawless equilibrium in the creation of the atom keeps this force under control. The chain reaction that causes a nuclear explosion can only be produced by artificial means. Throughout the course of this film, we have examined a great many astonishing and miraculous phenomena. We have seen that a body consisting of atoms breathes the atoms in the air, eats the atoms in food, and drinks the atoms in water. What we have seen is nothing else than the collision of photons and the electrons in the atoms in your eye. What about what we perceive through touch? That too consists of the atoms in our skin, repelling the atoms in objects. The structure of the atom possesses a very complex equilibrium and design. None of these structures, therefore, could have come into being by chance, as materialists who deny the existence of God admit. Chance gives birth only to chaos, corruption, disorder and error. The magnificent harmony, order and equilibrium in the atom show that all of life is the product of a conscious and flawless creation. All these scientific facts we have seen so far demolish atheistic philosophy in an incontrovertible manner and prove that the origin of everything, animate or inanimate, is not blind chance but creation. 
the Creator of all that exists is Almighty God, Lord of the worlds. In one verse of the Qur'an, it is revealed. In the creation of the heavens and earth, and the alternation of the night and day, and the ships which sail the seas to people's benefit, and the water which God sends down from the sky, by which he brings the earth to life when it was dead, and scatters about in it creatures of every kind, and the varying direction of the winds, and the clouds subservient between heaven and earth, there are signs for people who use their intellect.